Hi, it's Custom Kate. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a tabletop with inlaid colored epoxy. Don't worry, the video is going to sh start shortly. First thing I did was I went to Home Depot and I got three 12 inch wide boards and I had them all cut to the same length. I did get them from the damage section, section so they were 70% off. I knocked out all the weekend uh, knots that were in the boards and then I went back and I um, sanded around where those knots were. Then I took my uh, jigsaw and I cut out all the cracks, which is why they were 70% off, and made some nice designs for, to where I knew I was going to pour my epoxy. Then I took a Craig jig and I uh, drilled some holes to where I knew the boards would attach, and then I glued the boards together after I had drilled my Craig jig holes using clamps and a nice level. After the glue dried, then I went back in with my Craig jig screws and I attached all three boards together, still while making it was making sure it was level. I sanded one whole side completely with 80 grit, then 220 grit, and then the back side where I'm going to be taping so that my epoxy doesn't seep out of, I used 60 grit, then 80 grit, then 220 grit. Something that a lot of people don't do when they're pouring epoxy is they don't take off the residual dust um, from where the sanding took place. I just use masking tape and I do that. And now you're going to want to um, use Packers tape, like just plain tan Packers tape to tape up where you don't want the epoxy running out of. And something that nobody ever does <laughs> that makes your epoxy uh, cleanup process go much smoother is you want to blow dry this tan packers tape. It's just going to reactivate the glue and make sure that your seal is much, much tighter. At the end of this video, I show you where I did a practice board where I did not use the masking tape or the blow dryer. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to get a um, pla plastic water bottle and you're going to do two equal measurements of I don't know, I think I did like half a cup and half a cup and just mark it with a Sharpie marker because that's where you're going to fill your epoxy resin and your epoxy hardener. I'm not going to show you right here the mixture of the epoxy, but I did use Crystal Clear from East Coast Resin. I'm going to show you a little later on in this video the mixture of the two because there's no point in doing two. Um, for my first mixture, this is my sealant mixture. Uh, I only did a little bit, which is why I used the the plastic water bottle, but here you see I'm just pouring enough into my cracks just to create a well, like a sealant. Um, the reason you're going to want to do this rather than pouring all of your epoxy at once is because if you do have any leaks in your, your packer's tape, it's all going to go come seeping out. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like later. You want to use a foam brush to just seal up any air holes or cracks that you might have along the edges. And then um, this is going to, you might have a lot of air bubbles come out of here because that's just the air seeping out of the wood. It's really porous. Okay, so here's my sealant pour that's all dried. I let it sit for 24 hours. It's nice and crystal clear, almost like glass. Uh, the next thing I did was I was I got ready to make my big pour. Um, this is going to be my filler pour of epoxy that fills up all the, all the space that I missed out on. Um, so it's worth it to watch this video because when you do order your crystal clear epoxy, it comes with like three or four pages of instructions on all the ways you can mess up. And yeah, there are a lot of ways to mess up. And the biggest one being that you don't do get your measurements right. I used a glass measuring jar that I found from a garage sale for 25 cents because I knew I was just going to throw this thing away afterwards. It's such a mess to try to clean out. I just wanted something that I could toss. So... Make sure you do two equal parts. If you don't, like let's say you put too much resin in uh, versus hardener, you'll have spots in your epoxy that will never dry. They'll be gummy and soft to the touch and you'll end up having to just scrap your whole entire project, if not chisel out all that epoxy. When you first go to mix the epoxy and the resin together, make sure you don't um, mix it too fast or try to use a hand beater. Don't try to cut corners. Mix it nice and slow and steady. The reason being is you don't want to get too many air bubbles. Otherwise, those air, bub air bubbles will get permanently trapped in your epoxy and they'll never come to the surface and pop out. Once you begin stirring, you'll notice that it turns immediately like a milky white. You want that. Don't be afraid of that. That's what's supposed to happen. Keep on stirring, keep on stirring, keep on stirring, and eventually it'll turn more opaque. You are going to get some bubbles in there. Don't be afraid, um, you know, as long as you're not whipping it. It, the bubbles will come rise to the surface after you pour it and they'll, they'll pop out. 
to help you pop these bubbles when they do rise to the surface, use a plumber's a plumber's torch, a plumber's torch, or even a heat gun. Um, don't let the epoxy settle for a few hours and then say, "Oops, I forgot to pop my bubbles," and try to go back and do it because otherwise you'll have burnt bubble marks in your epoxy. I know firsthand. <laughs> um, let me see what else was really important about epoxy. Um, the temperature is is pretty important too. You can't pour this when it's too cold or if it's too hot. I think it was maybe 70 degrees outside when I, I did this project and I had absolutely no problems with my epoxy drying. This filler pour that I'm doing here also is going to set for 24 hours uh, before I go back and sand over it. Uh, I'm about to add some powdered pigment soon and just to let you know what I used, I used Pearl X powdered pig pigment I bought from Amazon. I think I paid six bucks for it. I just eyeballed it, didn't kind of do any kind of exact measurement. Uh, epoxy, no matter what brand it is, whenever you buy it, if you're going to do a clear pour of it, just keep in mind that it always yellows in time. Like after a few years, it will yellow. So my opinion, I think it's worth it to add pigments to hide that yellowing. I had to buy my uh, East Coast resin epoxy off of Amazon because none of the craft stores or hardware stores sell um, quart size epoxies where I live. They only sold like really tiny bottles by, I think, I think by Loctite. When you do buy Loctite epoxy to do smaller projects, it's a bit thicker in consistency than this here. So it doesn't run as much, which is, which is okay. But, um, I, I feel like this crystal clear epoxy pours the best and it gives you the best consistency, I guess you would say afterwards. Anyhow, here I am pouring my final pour of epoxy and I will tell you I did mess up and how I messed up is because I forgot to level my boards before I put them down. I did lay them down on top of several layers of cardboard and packing paper just in case my, my tape was going to spill out. <laughs> I wouldn't have to chisel epoxy off my garage floor. Anyhow, because I didn't level them, my epoxy started seeping out over the edges of my cracks on one side more than on others which just meant I had more sanding to do afterwards. So this is what it looks like after the pour has um, sat for 24 hours. Another way I messed up is I had my garage door open and all these tiny particles flew into my epoxy when it was seal um, drying. It's okay, I sanded them out. Oh, here's the bad practice board that I did. As you can see, my epoxy all leaked out from the bottom of the tape. It's not completely filled at all. And here's the bottom of the board. You can see around the tape, there's big globs of epoxy that just came pouring out over my tarp. Um, so yeah, it's really important to use the blow dryer and use masking tape. Here's my good board. No problems there because I did it the right way. So <laughs> do as I do, not as I say. And just to give you an idea of what it's, what it's kind of like when you're peeling away that um, Packers tape, you might get bits and pieces that still cling to the epoxy. Um, just try to keep peeling it off as much as you can. You can use some acetone, just a little bit on a cotton ball to help uh, release the glue from the epoxy, but not too much. Um, you're going to go back in and you're going to sand. I sanded with 60 grit, then 80 grit, and then 220 grit. You really want to use a fine sandpaper your last sanding, otherwise it's going to leave your epoxy cloudy. Um, just to give you an idea of if your epoxy is cloudy or not, use a wet paper towel, run it across uh, where your pores were, and as you can see, it's really vibrant and beautiful. So my 220 was my final uh, sanding that I did. Uh, to finish off my tabletop, I went back to Home Depot, got some rails, just added them to the sides with some more pocket screws with my Craig jig. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I did seal it with high gloss outdoor um, polyurethane just to give it that extra pop and I added my, I just threw it on top of an old flat file I had and it came out beautiful.